you can do a bi-level without a backup rate or with a backup rate, which usually on those patients, a, an uh, ASV, which we'll talk about, that's usually the best choice. Um, you wouldn't have to pick it, but that's usually what works best. Um, this, then they threw this category in here, hypoventilation, which really, it's designed for obesity hypoventilation. Um, never had this category till a few years ago, and Peter Gay at the Mayo, I think, pushed it forward. He admitted this wasn't exactly what he wanted. He didn't get everything he wanted, but he said it was better. Um, I don't see a lot of people sending these patients through labs and getting them covered. It's still not that easy. Um, but, but again, they got to show, you know, when they're awake, um, that their CO2 is greater than what we think is normal, greater than 45 or greater. They do spirometry just to show they don't have COPD because if it's COPD, they'll send them back to the COPD pathway. Um, and then they'll do, um, and I do like this little statement, ABGs done during sleep. Um, <laughs> let me know how that goes. <laughs> well, I guess the key is, or immediately upon awakening. Uh, and I think if you look in the dictionary, the word arousal, um, you'll see a picture of someone putting a needle in your right, right here. Um, but, but so they, they do that, or they could do a sleep study. Um, and so if they call, and they have to show that their CO2 actually gets worse when they sleep. So it goes up by seven. Um, so then they go, okay, we get a machine without a backup rate. If now you want to go with a backup rate, then you have to show that they actually do worse on the device, which doesn't make sense to me. But uh, so it's just not that easy to qualify them. That's why many times, <laughs> um, home care wise, whether it's this diagnosis or the COPD, it's sad, but it is sometimes easier to get a ventilator covered for a COPD patient than it is a bi-level with a backup rate. And that should not be because one's so much more expensive, but the way they're written, um, it's easier in this, at this time, it's easier to get a ventilator covered for like COPD and possibly for obesity hyperventilation than it is a bi-level. And, uh, but that's what we, those are the rules we have to deal with. Hopefully someday someone will change those, but right now that's what we live with. So, so those are the guidelines that a physician um, has to follow or the DME has to come up with that they're followed, the sleep lab has to work with before they send patients home. So a lot of hoops to jump through. They haven't changed for a while, but they used to change frequently. But um, hopefully they will change them for the better soon. Um, so we're going to go bi-level on this patient. So why does it work or how does it work? Um, basically, it lets them you know, breathe much better at night. Depending on their disease, that's a huge problem because at night when you should be sleeping and relaxing and, and, and enjoying nice dreams, if you're fighting to breathe, you aren't doing that well, um, which means it ends up cardiovascular consequences, hypertension, heart failure, type 2 diabetes, a lot of things there. Um, but if you do put them on a bi-level, you ventilate them at night, you're going to increase their O2, bring their CO2 down even in the day. Colin Sullivan, who was the one who invented CPAP in Australia a long time ago, 81, he also did studies on COPD patients, and he showed if he ventilated them at night with a bi-level that he could bring their CO2s down when they woke up in the morning, not to the normal level, but closer to the normal level, and they felt so much better. And he felt that it actually reset the chemo, central chemoreceptors. Um, so when they started out the day, they were refreshed and actually felt good. Um, so. So it will actually improve this stuff. Um, if they do have floppy airways, it'll stabilize the upper airway too. So they won't have those arousals and trying to breathe. Um, and it will rest the muscles. Because a perfect patient, a perfect setting, all they have to do is just kind of go <gasps> and the machine will take over the breathing and they just relax. Um, depending on their disease state, that can be huge to let them get up in the morning and feel so much better. Um, and like an OSA patient, OSA patient, they feel really tired in the day, and it's maybe not necessarily because their O2 goes low and their CO2 goes high. It's just like if you were asleep and someone came in your room and slapped you in the head every five minutes and ran out. Um, they keep getting aroused all the time um, because, they, because the body knows if they get to REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, you're more or less paralyzed. You have your eye muscles, your diaphragm, some sphincters we won't go into that are important. Um, but, um, but really, if you get into REM sleep because you lose a lot, you're going to go really low O2, high CO2s if you have problems. So the body awakens them and arouses them, so 
they don't get to the normal sleep staging, if we're normal, we should go every 90 minutes through different stages and into REM. REM, if you wake up in the morning and remember dreams, you're in REM. REM is when you dream and you remember dreams. So if you see patients that say, I never dream, well, the body never let them get to REM. <laughs> and so because the body keeps awakening them and arousing them, that's why they're tired in the day because they can't go through the stages and they keep getting aroused. Um, so if we fix that, let them go the normal architecture, they're going to feel so much better in the day. In the bottom line, it's all about comfort. If they're comfortable, they're going to wear it because everybody doesn't, everybody gets paid on compliance. Actually, turn around, they don't get paid if they don't, aren't compliant. So it's into the best interest of the companies to get them compliant. Yeah, humorous, years ago, we had wireless on our machines. It was a separate option. Um, probably 15 years ago and we had it, it was a great option and people used it mostly for truck drivers to check their compliance and stuff but at that point no one demanded compliance to get paid for so we sold a few but not that many and we pro it was probably out for three or four years and then Medicare said you're going to prove compliance now we sold more of those modules the next month as we did the last three years because now you had to prove compliance and probably always should have been there as far as looking after the patient, but until someone told them, we're not gonna pay you until you show this guy's using it, all of a sudden now it's all about compliance. So now we have to make sure they are wearing it or you're not gonna get paid. Um, so bi-level, how's it work? You know, you have um, EPAP, you have your EPAP, and that's really um, what you know controls the floppy airways. Um, improves the oxygen, it works like a you know, peep, expands the air sacs a little bit, pushes the oxygen across. If they've got fluid in the lungs, it'll actually make that less as a problem. Um, you got IPAP, if you keep the EPAP the same and increase the IPAP, which is pressure supports the difference between them, you're gonna give them a deeper breath. If you're in ER seeing patients and someone comes in respiratory failure and the respiratory rate's, you know, 30-something, and, okay, I'm going to put him on treatments, I'm maybe putting him on NIV before we tube him, uh, do a blood gas. Before you get the results of a blood gas, um, you might see you're already in the right path because the respiratory rate's going down. Because that's usually the first clue. I'm meeting his needs, his respiratory rate drops down, so hopefully you've got it below 25 because you are taking over the work of breathing. You're letting him initiate the breath, and the machine will do the breathing for them, which means you're going to blow down the CO2. And, and again, pressure support, all it is is the difference between IPAP and EPAP. It's some confusion in home care, some confusion is, depending on the manufacturer, they order IPAP or they order pressure support. And so I get those calls all the time. Okay, this doctor ordered IPAP, but I don't have that choice on your machine. Well, because we use pressure support. So EPAP plus pressure support gives you IPAP. So it's just a math problem. But, uh, but again, that's all you see, that, that's, that's the basic settings you do, IPAP, EPAP, pressure support. Um, a little side, care must be taken to, not to overventilate. I see the opposite, <laughs> that more people are scared and don't ventilate that well. Very different from what we do in the U.S. compared to Europe. Europe's very aggressive. Um, and I know years ago when Medicare used to pay for the device with the backup rate. They used to pay for them forever. They didn't cap them. They would pay $600 a month forever, and so all of a sudden everybody was on an ST device, even though they probably didn't need it. Um, and so then we, I know we got audited. An inspector general came by our office, asked questions about it, and asked, and I, I'm out of Kansas City, and, and I was the manager, and they asked, you know, what do we, we maybe had 20 patients on it. They said, how do you follow them up? Well, we go out every month to see them. Why would you do that? I go, you're paying me like a ventilator. I'm going to check them that way. No one else is doing that. Well, I can't have an impact on anybody else. Um, and unfortunately, that's what was happening. They looked at them and realized these companies had 40 to 50 out there and never followed them up, and they had settings like 8 over 4. Don't tell me that's doing a whole lot, <laughs> Ex except they're getting reimbursed quite a bit for it. Um, so they capped them. So, and, uh, so we did it to ourselves uh, by not really being paying attention. But, but again, what I've seen, more people are, don't ventilate them enough. Now, if you have a neuromuscular patient, this is true. You can, the lungs are very compliant. You probably can 
easily overventilate them, but in COPD or obesity hyperventilation, you may have to push the envelope a little bit and get them higher. Europe routinely does like 25 over 6. Um, and then they will they'll actually check their CO2 with an art line or transcutaneous to see are we ventilating them to get their CO2s down. So they really do a lot more technical stuff that maybe we see here in the U.S. But they and the patients tolerate it better, higher pressures like that because they're actually feeling better. So that's um, difference between countries. Um, so here is here's what you're actually doing. If it, this is what a sleep tech can see. Um, I mean, you see patient flow, the flow. And then here's what the pressure is. All the little settings on the bi-level or the ventilator, all the little tweaks are designed to change something on here, whether it's the trigger. Let's make this easier for the patient to, to initiate the breath. Or the cycle, we can make it harder or easier or faster or longer when the breath ends. Right? Huge for COPD. Um, we can change how long this lasts. We can change how fast it goes in. We can change how much the pressure goes in. We can change how often the breath happens. So everything is designed, all the tweaks are designed to change something like that to either ventilate them better or make them more comfortable for them. Um, and the benefit of bi-level or pressure support, whatever you want to call it, ventilator, um, the benefit of why they're so comfortable is because it's flow cycle. It takes up a little bit of flow to start the breath, and it looks for the flow to degrade before the breath ends. And that's pretty natural the way we breathe. Unlike a, like a volume ventilator, that you, like a CIS control, it just pushes 500 and ends. The patient's not controlling it. Now, if they're severe, who cares? You're just trying to keep them alive and treat them. But once they get awake and they're having to use it and use it with a mask, um, you need to make it comfortable for them. And that's why pressure support can really be very comfortable and more natural for them to breathe. Um, so why would it go to bi-level? Well, they don't tolerate high pressure settings. And that's real different from wherever you're at, too. Um, I, down in Oklahoma, I covered Oklahoma. Some physicians try to send patients out on CPAP of 22, which CPAP only goes at 20, so I have to do a bi-level. Um, and then other places, um, I, one extreme, it was New Orleans. I used to cover that. And the home care company put every patient on 10 on bi-level. And I asked them, and I said, well, why'd you do that? Well, you just think it's more comfortable. Well, when I looked into it, the comfort, comfort setting was because the branch manager was getting reimbursed on bi-level more than CPAP. So his wallet was more comfortable when he put out a lot more CPAPs. Um, but the definition of high pressure is all dependent on what you think. Now, the sleep society, AASM, say 15 is a line drawn in the sand. So a lot of people use 15. Okay, they're not doing well on 50. I'm going to switch into a bi-level. Um, and we all, well... At least I've seen many patients that five seems like tremendously. I remember getting calls from a patient, called and said, you know, you're going to have to pick this up. I can't take this. So, and I look and I go, when did we set you up? Last night. Well, <laughs> you might give it a little more time. And I looked at the settings and they're like CPAP is six. And, and I want to say suck it up, Spanky, but I didn't. I said, well, <laughs> well, we'll be out there to help you. Um, but, but it all depends on what they're used to. Um, the, the 15 usually, some, I've seen people that tolerate 20 with nasal pillows, but more times people have trouble tolerating it at first, and so just consider to go, you've got a choice of bi-level. Um, again, 15 is a pretty good common line drawn in the sand. Um, patient complains. The first thing you can complain is you're not letting me exhale. Well, that's exactly right. I'm not. I'm keeping pressure in your airway. And so most, most of the devices have pressure relief. Uh, Respirant gets C-Flex, Respirant gets EPR, uh, pressure relief. And so that many times takes care of that, and you can drop it. And so when they inhale and they exhale, there's less pressure. And so it's a lot more comfortable, makes them comfortable for it. Um, knowing this patient, well, they got COPD. And knowing a CPAP may not be comfortable, and you may end up going to a bi-level. So knowing their history, which I think that's really a lot better now than it used to be. I was in a lab in St. Louis once, and they were titrating a patient on, I guess, CPAP, doing a titration CPAP. And, and I asked, so what, what information do you have? And they had a little piece of paper that said, titrate Mr. Smith. <laughs> a lot different now. <laughs> you can pull up the medical <laughs> records right there um, and, and know, do they have COPD? Do they have obesity hyperventilation? Um, that's huge to know. Um, to know where you're going to go. 
And most people say you've got to have a difference of four before you're really calling it ventilation, before you're ventilating them. Um, our, in our machine, our EPR pressure relief, you can go to three, and it works exactly like a bi-level. The exhale, it goes down, either one, two, or three, whatever you set at, and then it comes back up when they take a breath. So it works exactly like a bi-level, but it won't go, it'll just go to three. So most people say four is when you start to ventilate them, so we're going to call that bi-level. Um, so specific COPD, the problems are what you can see in that. Um, usually pretty common that they hypoventilate, and you, you guys see them all the time and realize when you're talking to them in the day and doing treatments on them and seeing them and they're having trouble breathing, um, catching their breath between talking to you, they're going to have a heck of a time when they go to sleep because they do, when they get into REM, if they get